You ever find yourself drowning in tasks, struggling to make progress? Well, it's time to cut through the clutter and simplify success. Today, we're diving into three tips from experts like Gary Keller, author of The One Thing, to help boost your productivity. No more feelings of being overwhelmed, just practical strategies to streamline your schedule so you can actually finish your to-do list. From mastering priorities to sharpening focus, we're unpacking actionable tips from top productivity experts. It's time to take control and achieve more with less effort. Let's get into it together. How's it going, everyone? If it's your first time here, my name is Christian, and I've been studying personal development experts for more than a decade. On this channel, we explore the strategies and tips to help you define what success means to you, work towards it together. So a lot of people are familiar with the 80-20 principle, which suggests that 80% of the results usually come from about 20% of the effort. But the one thing takes this one step further. What's the one thing that would make everything else easier or unnecessary? So this question will help establish a couple of things. The first is a clear objective. Uncovering the answer to this question, or even the pursuit of the answer to this question, means that you have a measurable goal that will provide you with direction and clarity. Secondly, that direction will give you a pathway to regularly review. Periodically reviewing and adjusting priorities to that one thing is what helps me stay focused, but adaptable. Like for today, my one thing is filming this video. But what am I supposed to do after that? Well, the overarching one thing that I'm searching for is success both emotionally and financially with YouTube. That serves as a compass to understand that the next thing I should be working on should be in alignment with that long-term goal. Something that I always try to keep in mind is that to-do lists tend to be very long, but success lists tend to be short. The amount of days that I used to have a to-do list of like 20 to 25 items long, and it would take me all day to finish. And when I finally did, I would look back and feel like I hadn't really accomplished that much. And what I realized over time is that you can't add to a full plate. You have to remove some stuff before you're able to pile more on. And you also can't have multiple priorities. The reality is by definition, a priority is the quality of being more important. So what's the one thing that you're considering the most important right now? It's the thing that you're choosing to place above all else. Is it your relationship with your significant other? Or maybe it's your physical or mental health or that business you wanna start. And in my experience, the more that I've stuck to this principle, the more that I've realized I really do have time for most of the stuff I wanna do. But it was less of this feeling of getting pulled in a hundred different directions and more of this methodical approach of, great, I finished this thing, now I can move on to the next thing. Some days, you just don't feel like you really have it in you to accomplish those big tasks that really move the needle. So the second method that I use to accomplish more and stay more productive is the domino effect. The domino effect is exactly what it sounds like. I start with something small and achievable, and I let that first domino fall and periodically drop bigger dominoes. What this usually looks like for me is starting with something that's really simple that I'm 100% sure that I can get done. Sometimes that might just be brushing my teeth or doing the dishes. But what I found is that by doing something simple, I'm much more easily able to build on that. An object in motion stays in motion, right? I might not be able to focus well enough to take on the world today, but I can definitely clean off my desk. I can definitely knock out 15 minutes of admin work like replying to some emails that I really need to get around to. Then those things domino or snowball into bigger tasks because I'm already feeling great from having done some of the smaller ones. I'm really just benefiting off of the momentum. And this is my favorite way to get things done on days that just feel like a complete wash. My exact domino list used to be brush my teeth, meditate for five to 10 minutes, and then listen to Jocko podcast while I swept or did the dishes. After that point, I usually knew if I was gonna be completely ineffective or not for the rest of the day, but at least I took care of myself and cleaned the house. And notice that nothing on that list is hard to do at all. And more often than not, this actually gave me a nudge in the right direction to work on bigger things. Real quick, before we get into the third tip, this video is sponsored by me. This takes a lot of work to do on my own from all of the writing and the producing and the editing of my own content. So if you made it this far in the video, I'd really appreciate it if you would hit subscribe. Now, back to the video. How can you have a video about productivity and not mention time management? I believe that most people understand that you have to manage your time effectively to be able to get more done, but I don't believe that just because people understand that, they're actually willing to put it into action in their lives. So I'm gonna try framing this a little bit differently because this is the way it finally stuck for me and got through my thick head. When it comes to time management, you have to be willing to ruthlessly eliminate distractions because saying yes to allowing distractions means saying no to what matters most. If you say yes to watching Netflix and sitting on the couch right now, you are effectively saying no to everything else that you could be doing. You're saying no to fully focusing on your work, you're saying no to making a budget, you're saying no to grocery shopping, you're saying no to exercising. And that's why I started using time blocking to allocate time to the things I need to get done. But I also use it to block time to relax so I can do it guilt-free. Time blocking is just scheduling out dedicated blocks of time to do specific tasks. For me, I had to start putting these into a calendar because that kind of removes the thought process behind me arguing with myself to work on certain things for too long and some things not at all. And one final point on time management, don't multitask. 
Multitasking just isn't efficient. There's loads of studies out there that show that you can do one thing really well, but if you try to do more than that, you end up just doing two things not well at all. Task switching might work for things like folding laundry and watching TV at the same time, but not if you wanna do your best thoughtful work. If you wanna do your best work, then just focus on the task at hand. Not checking emails in between, not watching reruns of The Office on your second monitor. I am still guilty of this sometimes because I'm human and I love John Krasinski, but I still do my best work when I'm just working on one thing. This next productivity hack that I'm 100% just swiping from Alex Hermosi because it worked so well in my life is the concept of watering holes. Watering holes, simply put, is just having different environments where you're the most prone to do certain kinds of activities. The way that I've changed unwanted behaviors in my life the quickest is through changing the environment that I put myself in. And I don't mean flying to New York City so I can go to some co-working space and work with other people who think life moves at a million miles a minute. What I mean is I have one desk in the house that I'll do my work, but if I want to relax and play video games or watch YouTube videos for fun, then I just go to a different place in my house. That way when I need to get work done, I sit in the same spot every time and my mind registers that it's time to put my phone down and not watch John Krasinski and Jack Ryan. I just work. Lastly, I think it's important to mention that you should reward your progress. This one's coming from me. Yes, you can delay gratification for years and years and just keep your nose to the grindstone, but I personally don't really feel like that's what life is all about. A good sword is balanced at the hilt. And what that means is that even though the blade side is longer than the hilt, in terms of density, they both balance each other out. So if you think giving yourself a break every one or two weeks is good for productivity, then cool. If you can make it three weeks before you need to reward yourself in some way, then great, even better. Just don't forget to enjoy the journey. Whichever way you're going, enjoy the small victories. So there you have it, four and a half expert tips on how to lead a more productive life. If you enjoyed this, then maybe you'll enjoy this other video where I discuss five questions to help you find direction in your life. Anyways, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next one.